Now, in all honesty, I do have a whole script for this video. I'm going to kind of half follow it. Turns out when I write, I write like I'm freaking Shakespeare. Not at all how I talk. So <laughs> this has been something I've been thinking about for a long time. Just about how it is for, you know, someone who's new to learning Blender when they are trying to explore and like go on the internet and everything to try to learn. And I know that there's a lot of stuff that can be counterproductive. So I'm here to just give a little advice, I guess, break it down a little bit. So here we go. Now, first of all, the Blender like community online is super, super welcoming. It's kind of crazy. Like everyone's very, very supportive. At the end of the day, I guess it's just artists supporting artists, which is beautiful. But I have noticed sort of a problem. Now, the Blender community online has been growing very, very quickly in the last few years, mainly because of one thing. It's free forever. And so that basically makes it the most accessible way to get into digital 3D art, as well as the number of people joining the community. The age of which people start to learn Blender, I see has been lowering. This is no longer an old head hobby. <laughs> you don't need to go to school just to learn the software. And yeah, younger and younger people are joining with crazy amounts of talent. First thing that comes to mind is William Langren. I think Bro's like 17 now, but he started learning Blender like when he was way younger and the stuff he makes is insanely good. I was also pretty young when I first started learning Blender. I was 13, but it didn't stick. Like I didn't keep going. I only learned it for a couple months, did my first donut tutorial, but eventually I kind of gave up on it. Why though? Why didn't I stick with it? An easy answer would just to be like, oh, you know, bad computer. I was on a, a terrible old MacBook. Like I had to render on the CPU. CPU was slow as hell. It, I, I wasn't rendering anything, you know, anything crazy. I could also say that, you know, I got bored and I moved on to other things, but neither of those is the real underlying reason. The reason I stopped was I became very unmotivated very quickly because of this prevailing problem in the, the Blender community online which is there's too many fucking tutorials. And that's the thing. There were too many tutorials, so I followed too many tutorials. Okay, but then you might be asking, how are you supposed to learn as a beginner? That's a valid question, and I'm gonna be getting into that in this video. So, Blender is really powerful as an artistic medium. The things you can make are almost limitless. Like, it's really, really powerful. But unlike a traditional artistic medium like painting, drawing, sculpting, it's not very intuitive. Like sure, drawing and painting might be hard, but the actual mechanics that go behind it, it's not hard to grasp. To draw, you just need, what, paper, pencil, and you make some lines, and that's it. Obviously then it takes a lot of practice doing that to be able to represent the things in your mind on the paper. For 3D software though, you have an additional challenge, which is learning the mechanics behind the tool itself, because it's not straightforward. Think about it, to even just be able to use Blender, even if you're not good at it whatsoever, to just be able to have a final product, what do you need to know? You need to know the interface. You need to learn how to model, how to texture, how to light, render, composite. And there's a lot of extra steps in between those. And that's just to be able to have a final product. And the final product, if you're a beginner, is probably not gonna be very good. So then on top of learning all of that, you have to learn to put them together to make something cohesive and intentional. All this to say that the technical nature of Blender as a software means that just to have a final product, you need to do a lot of problem solving. So problem solving is sort of fundamental to 3D art. And if we want to get into learning how to actually be artistic and make cool things in Blender, we need to learn all of these technical things very quickly. So how do we shorten the time that it takes to learn the software itself? We have to look at how we approach our actual learning process. So active learning is an educational method that goes above just, you know, listening, taking notes, and trying to absorb the information. It promotes problem solving and engaging with the material directly in order to really solidify the information in your mind. Practicing this active learning can really encourage active recall, which is a learning technique that I like to use just, you know, for school, where you try to recall information with no help, and it doesn't matter if you get it completely wrong, you just really try to get the right answer and then you go find the real answer. And the more you do this, the more the information sticks in your head. It can really, really improve your ability to recall information compared to, let's say, just reading something over and over in hopes of memorizing it. So when you watch a tutorial as a beginner, and trust me, I've been there, it can be really easy to just watch the tutorial and follow click by click 
what the person's doing because you got no idea what the hell else to do. Doing this over and over can really reduce our active recall and it can make it a lot harder to learn the software. A tutorial is basically just a performance. It's a rehearsed performance. It's basically just a near perfect speed run to get to an end product. It's not at all a realistic representation of the creative process and what it took to actually get that render in the first place. So if you're following one of these tutorials, you aren't making mistakes and you aren't problem solving. This is going to make it hard to actively learn Blender because you're not having to remember shortcuts, where things are, menus, all of that. And you're not going to be making those little mistakes that are essential to learning. Basically, you're not practicing active recall since you're not trying and failing independently. So what's an alternative? A big point of contention to this is that how the hell are you going to learn Blender if you can't watch tutorials? Which is honestly super valid. You need to start somewhere with your learning. And tutorials are not the devil, you know, I'm not trying to say that. Watching a few is not a bad thing, but it can quickly become a waste of time. I would recommend that you complete one tutorial series for beginners. This is basically going to take you through each step of the process to get a complete render. And to go a little further, I'm going to recommend a specific series, which is to no one's surprise, the Blender Guru Dona tutorial. It really has everything you need to learn. I mean, you know, you'll be doing modeling, a little bit of sculpting, you'll be doing some UV unwrapping, texturing, shading, some scattering, you'll be learning modifiers, you'll learn lighting, even animation, rendering, and compositing. It's really the whole package. Okay, so let's say you've done the donut tutorial. What's next? So another reason that watching too many tutorials can be detrimental is your workflow. Now, what is workflow? Basically, it's just the sort of process, the steps that you take in order to go from like start to finish for a render. And everyone's sort of natural workflow is very different and very personal. This mainly comes down to the fact that every artist sees the world differently. And since everyone sees it differently, they have a different way of taking the world around them, their life and everything else, and interpreting it into art. And for Blender artists, this leads to a unique 3D workflow. Some people like to, for example, start blocking out a scene with primitives, using placeholder assets. Some people like to make sure the lighting is really dialed in first. Some people like to get a super quick render, work on the compositing, go back and dial in everything else before going back to the composite. Some people like to sketch out physically what they're gonna do first. Everything's very different. There are a lot of workflows out there. Each has its pros and cons. For me, I like to import my main assets, kind of figure out my composition first, build out my basic lighting and jump into compositing. Then I'll go back and dial in every other aspect like I mentioned before. It's just my personal preference because I am an impatient person and I want to get an idea of what my render is going to look like as soon as possible. Okay, but what does this have to do with tutorials? Since it's such an individual thing, copying someone else's workflow can really slow you down long term. You can be doing things that really don't feel intuitive that will really slow you down. Instead, develop your own workflow just through experimentation. You need to work on projects in order to figure out what works for you. So finally, and I think most importantly, the biggest reason to avoid too many tutorials as a beginner, your creativity. I mean, look, after all, Blender is a creative medium and you're most likely to use it to create art, to express yourself creatively. Now, I've talked about how too many tutorials can be detrimental to your workflow and your learning, your problem solving and your technical development, but it can do even more damage. Without creating your own original art and ideas, your creativity can get stunted. I think a lot of people give up on learning a new artistic medium or just creating in general because of a lack of inspiration. This is so insanely common and it's something that I think every artist grapples with. Unfortunately, people can start to just want to make what they saw in the tutorial because it's easy. You already, the idea is there for you. And I 100% get the temptation of doing that, trust me. But you gotta know that it's inefficient. Conceptually, it's the same as learning how to draw by copying exactly how someone else draws. Like you might get an end product, but is it really yours? Is it your creation? I mean, that's maybe philosophically too complex for this video, it's something I could talk about later maybe. So I'll just leave it for now. But how can we as 3D artists get away from this? The answer is simple and frustrating. Like I said before, you just gotta make your own stuff. And look, I know it can be super hard and super annoying to come up with your own ideas and to, to make something of your own, especially when you're feeling unmotivated. A lot of the time, we just don't feel inspired and that's okay. But as the French artist Henri Matisse once said, don't wait for inspiration. It comes while one is working. I imagine he said it in French, but part of the creative process is just slogging through the shit. Sometimes you're just doing the super painfully boring work, but moments of inspiration can hit you at the weirdest times. It can be while you're doing this crazy boring work. It can be while you're doing something completely different. The key is just to start. It's not going to happen 
if you haven't started. I personally like to do this just by brainstorming. I'll have a piece of paper in front of me and I'll just write down whatever comes to my head. Literally anything. It does not matter. If I see something that's kind of exciting, I'll sketch it out really quick and see if it will work in 3D. Not everything will. That's just how it is. Because of this, I just try to do as many ideas as I can in a certain amount of time, say like five minutes, whatever. And then I can kind of filter out everything that's not gonna work and have a few ideas that I can explore. It's also really important to acknowledge to yourself that your idea probably will change from the start and that's okay, that's a good thing. It means that your idea is developing and it's gonna be better than when you started. So now it's the time for you to create on your own. Look, disclaimer, it's not gonna be very good. When you're starting out, it's not gonna be very good and that's okay. Keep going, please. You really have to try to trust the process. Try to remember that whenever you get frustrated. I can tell you it's really important to keep in mind. And most importantly, when you get frustrated, when you get impatient, take a break, go for a walk, you know, make new friends, fall in love, live your life, and then come back and keep working on it. You'll do great. I wanna thank you if you made it this far. Uh, this has been an idea in my mind for a few months now. I haven't really had the time to sit down and properly film it. And I hope that at least maybe one person who's learning Blender will be able to take something positive away from this video. I feel like I've grown up with the Blender community in a way. Uh, and it's really important to me that, you know, I try to at least contribute and give back something. The more people learn, the more people care about this community, this software the better it gets. It's an open source project, so really we are the ones that can make it better. Also, in no way do I want to discredit people who make tutorials on, on YouTube. Uh, listen, I've made some. <laughs> I just wanted to kind of offer up my perspective on learning the software. I think you'll find that the tutorials that I have made are more general and more conceptual, uh, just because that's the type of stuff that I like watching. But yeah, I'm really curious to hear people's perspective on this, on this topic. So leave me a little comment, maybe. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe. Uh, I'm on reading week, so more content coming.